if you guys can just wrap up and send me what you have if you didn't get to the end of it you can just send it to me i think it'll be more productive to also like discuss what we think so um i guess you know we've been doing retina or doing mole for i don't know how many years now maybe five or so i think it's a good time to kind of like assess like how Effective the curriculum is in meeting your needs. You know, and that's the only point of the mostly the only point of the curriculum is to help you guys. So um, I think this is like uh, maybe sometimes as faculty, like we feel like we don't have that much like. <coughs> so now this is like a dedicated time for you guys to just you know uh, discuss like what you would like to see differently, like what would help you more. Um, and I just say this is like my first time doing like the team-based learning thing and I've never actually experienced it in real life. Uh, I just went by what the med students told me and what I YouTubed. So definitely curious for feedback on that at the end too. So logistically it can be like a little challenging with all the different documents and things. So, um, so what I was envisioning was that we would split up into three groups and we would discuss um, a couple of different aspects of the retina mole curriculum. So uh, one could be discussing FA conference, another could be discussing the lectures, and then uh, the other could be discussing, you know, learning on rotation. So I'm gonna ask you guys for the case-based learning to like split up by year. One, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe like try to sort yourself into three groups where there's approximately like junior and senior people in the three different groups. Um, physically organize yourselves together. So, so let's do three groups, and there's going to be like some senior and more junior people in each group. So, how many? Of three. Of three. Not this whole side of the room. Sure. Well, no, no, no. But if we take them at all the, you know, the United States and stuff. Three. Okay, these three, these three, George. Uh, so you got to, you got to take one of your people. Are you more diverse? We're both. We're both. Well, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I felt very hot. I have a blast problem. Okay. All right. So, um. This group over here, you can discuss FA conference, what you, how you'd like that to be different. This group over here, you can discuss uh, the <laughs> work how you'd like that to be different like on Friday morning. And then you can discuss, like, you know, on rotation, how you like. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, nominate one of you guys to be the scribe to write down your comments, okay? I'll, I'll look for breakfast while you guys do that. I better put on a mask. box in the Peds Retina 2023 under Retina Mole Curriculum. Um, in case you need to look at our current curriculum, it's on box in the Peds Retina 2023 folder called 
Right now, all curriculum. I was like, you know, more than one of the issues here is just like, so I remember when I was in the middle, there was like a couple of them. in like five more minutes or enough time or you're ready now to discuss in a big group what your primary Oh, okay. So it's almost like 
Yeah, so it's it's all really good like, to have two creative words. Yeah, so and you're like, just give me the lecture. Yeah. 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 It's basically yeah. just like, yeah. like, not the whole thing. Oh, you guys do have an anti VEGF lecture? No, wait, I think no, it was just an anti Okay, I was just curious because, like, I saw that on here. I was like, is there a specific anti VEGF lecture that's separate from diabetes and AMP? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I guess maybe uh, you guys could also talk about like whether the topics of the didactic sections are good. Like, would you like different topics? Would you like to cut any of them out? Would you? You know, feel, do you feel like that there's something that's like really critical that's missing? So in the film and school, what they were doing was the bad back in the years was the sales of what the prefectures were. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. Yeah, no problem. I'm just trying I think uh,
Yeah. Sure, go for it. I don't know. Okay, well, wait. Let's just get food first, then we'll talk. I think we're just talking about it. I'm always just like, what is this? Uh, I, I guess since like, we showed up together, yeah, I think it's done every day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 She didn't realize that, like, I love those siblings and, like, best friends, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to buy a pair. Yeah. Like, I'm going to buy a pair. Yeah. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. I'm not. We're buying a pair. Yeah. I think that's one. I know that. How's it going? I'm just going to get in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Give me that extra utensil. No, no, no. Oh no! You should be able to Now I'm going to be able to Thank you so much. You're welcome. There's only one over here. He's the key back. Yeah. Someone else comes from the UI. Yeah, It varies. Like right now, he's been on drug for four hours a week, ten hours a week. Now, now we'll hear what uh, Abigail has to say about her group's thoughts on FA conference. <laughs> um, so, for FA conference, the things that we came up with is number one. Um, the conferences tend to go over time, like quite a bit. So having it less often, or just like once a month, or yeah. having only like a max of two presenters each time, okay. that would probably be great. Because I find myself, and I'll just like not myself here, but um, I like I'm good at focusing for the first two presentations, and then I just cannot for the last one. The last one seems to rush a lot of times. Go go go! Yeah. And yeah, I think that's really good to think about because um, I think I don't know if the um, like the what is it called not the A AUPO has some sort of requirement for how many uh, like FA conferences each fellow has to present at. So I don't know if that's like the driving factor. Um, and then I don't know if residencies have a requirement for the number of FA conferences you have to go to or present at. I think we should, maybe if you could make a note that we should look into that. And def I don't think we should be trying to go exceed the <laughs> minimum requirements. <laughs> well, that's, um, I've talked to Bernstein in the past about doing FA conference and I asked him what are the requirements. He's like, well, it's we're only required to have it once a month. So I was like, why are we having it twice a month? Uh, but he said it's because it often gets canceled. But I was like, I don't know. So it may be that if you guys unanimously would love to have it less often, that we could, you know, bring that to the like PEC and be like, hey, you know, we have a lot of burdens on our time already. Like, we are not required to have this twice a month. Like, you know, I was not able to make a change, but maybe if you guys feel that way, we can. Yeah. So maybe the timing of it should be different too. So, but maybe those are just ideas. Down. I don't so know why. So I'm, yeah. like, I'm trying to do everything I can to like get us to FA conference. But... Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, in terms of Tuesday and Wednesday, I assume Mondays are Orbit conference still. So 
is Tuesday or Wednesday preferred? Oh, okay. Well, once a month. Yeah, no, no, de definitely. I, I will, uh, I will uh, advocate more strongly for the once a month than the changing the day. But if we could do both, that would be great. Is, do you guys have like a good resource that anyone found one that you like? <laughs> There's a super basic one. Um, I grew like a medicine resource uh -huh. and then like IR and yeah. that's like very basic. I guess one thing I I do I personally as a resident looked back on is I got the slides from one of the fellows that they gave at the beginning of the year. So that could be something that we could share. Yeah. So that maybe that's the best resource to share. That sometimes it going really long is like your guys' fault. So don't go don't go crazy with your presentations, you know. Like you can also focus on what's necessary for okay. So but the fellows are also to blame. Okay. Uh, I don't really remember, but we did not have it as often. That's for sure. <laughs> so I, I barely remember it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, any other comments on FA? Take homes is having it less often and uh, making sure that things get uploaded and it's more like OCAPS resident focused. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for making sure we're not just trashing everything. <laughs> so, uh, uh, should we discuss the didactics first? Uh, I just want to point out that you know when I asked Elaine, like, okay, how many hours of lecture are we required to have? It was substantially less than we were having. So just a thought to keep in mind that apparently, although retina lecture hours have been reduced, you know, whether you want to reduce that further or not. So, but, yeah. So one thing that I've heard is, I feel that I'm going to be able to do it. I feel that I'm going to be able to do it. I feel that I'm going to be able to do it. I feel that I'm going to be able to do it. I feel that I'm going to be able to do it. I feel that I'm going to be able to do it. I feel that I'
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm just putting stuff up on the slide. like a systematic framework for your brain to like stick the information in. Exactly. That sounds really good. That's the coffee thing you just see. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can have some of the things on that. That makes it a little bit more strong. And then you can also see Because my class is about that. Right? But like, I think some people do that. I don't know. I think it's a short part. But then sometimes it's a little bit more than the free work. It's like a day. You can only watch previous lectures or whatever. Sometimes it just jumps right in. Yeah. And for, at least for me, and I know for like, some others in my class, it feels kind of tough because we're like, we barely have the foundational knowledge. Yeah. And it's super important. So, yeah. So, and I guess maybe the. Uh, so, I guess the pre work is of varying quality in terms of providing you that, that framework. Maybe like some of us might have assumed that it like provides that and that's why they're like jumping into the quiz um, but maybe it's helpful to like because people learn in different ways and develop that framework in different ways um, that it is helpful for people to like share their So if people did re-record like a 30 minute over, that would be so helpful. If we're going to go down this path of doing like a nice summary or outline and we yeah. want to start anything else, I think that would be helpful for us to review kind of like, again, yeah, that's what we are going to do. Yeah. Like these are us going to be working on stuff. When she taught us lectures, was to like be your reading guide. So as you're reading through the chapter, you have like questions to answer or fill in the blank on oh. things where you're just like going through it and then you're like, oh, I missed that. Go back and find it. Okay. So it's wrong reading. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
All right, so, um, and then I think you guys, if you have specific uh, feedback for specific retina lectures, if you, as long as Sean's written them down, um, I think we can maybe, anything else we should discuss? Sure, yeah. yeah. I guess what kind of questions come up on OCAPs um, about AMD, like the trials? Yeah. Is there anything else? Okay. It's not so much about like training. Right, yeah. Thank you. Um, anything else? Do you guys feel like we have like the good topics? Like, I don't know, we have the intro to retina, which I don't know, I'm happy to ax any of my lectures. Pete's retina. I feel like Pete's retina. Like I don't understand. I still have been trying to find useful ways to occupy your time because I feel like you get a, P, a two hour Pete's retina thing from the pediatric service, and I'm happy to quit <laughs> teaching you guys. So I don't know. I'm thinking of axing that, and then. Um, but I do feel like the inherited uh, retinal degenerations that are associated with systemic disease are really critical for OCAPs um, and boards. And I know I've been to Bernstein's lecture about four times. So, but just, uh, I don't know. And I created, you know, um, there's some videos out there from me on that, but I don't know. It just any questions, thoughts about the overall like topics? Um, I think that was mainly no, because like the ROP is pretty well covered. But yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think having yeah. your lectures that yeah. you gave last year yeah. um, as pre-work, those are really good. And I really like the way that you organized into a framework. Yeah. Um, so having that as pre-work and then focusing on that. Because those type of, min not minutia, but those details are things that are constantly asked. Yeah. So I think it's good to launch this. Yeah. So if you want me to continue to occupy your time, I'm happy to, but if you don't want me to, like I'm happy, I, you know, can make more videos for you or update them or whatever, try to improve upon them, but, yeah. I think there are so many questions on apps, and I don't think that it's this much Do you feel like the intro to retina like scleral depression is okay or you want to have more like this is basics you need to know on call instead of like this is hands on? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. 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 Way possible, certainly. Right. That. Assuming yeah. that you see it, you yeah. know, and are able to visualize and understand it, yeah. Sounds good. Okay, so that's enough, maybe enough discussion of the didactic sessions. Sounds like the anti VEGF lecture is not happening, so I'll just remove that from the curriculum. Yes? Just one thought, really interesting. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, amazing things, like I just see on the phone. Yeah. Like, yeah. Random various studies, you know, that all the way down there would be nice because oh. there's so many times where I'm yeah. like, I have no code up much. Yeah, I'm like, I asked my senior, they don't know. Either. And I was like, no one knows what's happening. I don't know if they ever heard this or not. Yeah. And so that's been yeah. like a source of stress a lot of the fall. That's true. And I think that's that would be really true. nice to go over like the really basic random elements that you see. Yeah. I could, yeah, maybe I can incorporate that into the, um, the, Indirect like the yeah. 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 Do we have a copy of that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's incredible. No, it it's is also incredible. Yeah. 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 When he said that, I immediately yeah. thought of that. Yeah. It's also a video. It's also a video. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Can you so, email me the video? Yeah. 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 That should be made to a six-year-old baby. I never. Tony, I told you about three years ago. Put you to sleep. But then it got me where you can fuse. That's the one. Yeah.
No, I mean, it goes through all different random pathologies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can Google it. We have a copy of it upstairs. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, Sean, you took good notes. You'll send that to me. Yeah. Okay, Ashley, are you the scribe for your group? Yeah, I am. Um, the bark and I have not had the recommendation. Oh, shoot. Okay, what happened Nicole? to Cole? Are there multiple retina rotations? I'm, I'm not sure. Well, this could be like PGY3 retina rotation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but um, yeah. just in terms of like kind of yeah. recharting and more administrative okay. work, and you know, okay. sometimes that comes through. Okay, so it's pre charting. What other scut work are you guys doing? That's fine. Okay. I don't think it's like, I think it's a lot of scut work compared to the rest of our rotations, but in general, I don't think it's yeah. like it's, you're seeing a lot of the patients, you reach or you see a lot of patients who are self imaging. Yeah. It does suck when you're not used to it, like when you're coming off of peds and you're on. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what we're Yeah. <laughs> But it's probably a good point. Like in a lot of ways, doing that helps you know the patient because, like, you kind of put your finger on your own thoughts. And I'm like, if this was this, what would I do next? And then it's cool. Sometimes with the text, you're like, I don't know what to do. And you're like, I know. Yes. Yeah. Other feedback on the retina rotation? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think uh, we're gonna get. Uh, Tally has needs. <laughs> we're not gonna get away from taking. I, I think that I agree with you that it's not that educational, but uh, no, there's I can't change that. I have a question. So yes, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where this is because it was definitely. But what is happening to her? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that was going to be my feedback. I think whatever happens in the future, that takes to change. That was going to be scary. I know. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many but OR days in my schedule right now. So, why, wait, what was bad about it? Or um, There's no direction. Yeah, there's no direction. So, ORs, there's typically like. Like it wasn't clear where you needed to be or when. Yeah, but even if you were scheduled to her, like there'd be days where there's like zero cases. And then clinic with her is not actually can you write that down? Yeah. I think that is. Well anyway, there's not gonna be a clinic with her. Uh, so I just wonder like, whatever whatever replaces that is I see. It's not like as clearly defined, like this is what you do. And if, like, for example, if HeartNet has no cases, like, can you just, like, relax? You know, that would be nice. <laughs> I, I look at this good letter. Yeah. yeah. It's still awesome. Yeah. But again, a lot of them might be resolved when that 
So I think part of it is it seems like there's a lot of chaos among the fellows, like constantly they're like shuttling themselves around to make sure everyone's meeting the needy people's needs. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm happy to operate by myself, but I feel bad because you guys should be doing these pieces. But anyway, like, yeah. Because even in which there was often a day where I think Dr. Burns would have a fellow, and I was able to hop in with you, which was awesome. Yeah. Well, I think it would be really good when the res Retina Fellows remake their schedule for a resident representative to be like heavily involved with that. Um, I, any volunteers? Cole? Abigail? Uh, okay, maybe I'll um, ask them to kind of schedule a meeting and maybe uh, I'll attend the meeting too so I can help to advocate for you. So. And if you're a medical uh, fellow for medical. Yeah, it might happen. Right, uh, might take off the Yeah, line. we're hoping that. But it might be Schmitz Walkenberg's personal fellow, so we are not sure. Oh, I see. One, one thing I'm saying is certainly Shakur, Margarita, and Marie Obama. be like, what do you do in this case, in this case, in this case, and in this case, you're going to do Shakur contracts, and in this case, what do you do in this case? And that's just so much intimacy. I don't know, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's helpful. And so, like, for, because I, I, <laughs> I was learning more where, like, I was wrong to do the cases, and so I kind of, like, there's this awkward moment where it's like, should I do the residual of yeah. and, and it's just really awkward to me. Yeah. And so, yeah, we tend at the start of the period, you know, I have a communication yeah. with you, I felt like that was. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Other comments? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sounds good. I think hopefully we'll get some resident new schedule. I think uh, that would be something. So. Um, Okay, so you will email that to me, Ashley. Let's see what time it is. It's 8 o'clock. So we have until 9 o'clock, is that right? Uh -huh. So we might have to skip the Pete's Retina posterior Leucophoria part, but I feel like that's the least important. But that's just my. Okay, so uh, next we have a uh, little mini lecture. Um, I was talking to this Rob. So she requested a mini lecture. Uh, hold on, I just gotta find where I'm at. So, by the way, I think I also probably have like a fake omatosis lecture on either YouTube or the more I'm core somewhere. Okay. So, um, yeah, what do the phacomatoses have in common? Um, I try to, I'm not really good at memorizing things. So I try to like start from like a really basic level. Like what can I like find that's similar between like most of these things? Um, and what can I find as like an explanation for why things are the way they are? I find that helps me memorize things more, but different people are different. So, but, um, so most of them are uh, autosomally dominant, autosomal dominant inheritance. What's the reason for that? Uh, why does that make sense? I try to, you know, like I think of, you know, like retinitis pigmentosa, like the ciliopathies, those are autosomal recessive because like they're mutations in enzymes. And if you have one bad copy of the enzyme gene and one good copy, you still probably have enough enzyme to do the job. Because like, you know, enzymes like catalyze reactions. You, you know, you only need a few of them to catalyze a lot of reactions, so half is probably enough. So what's the explanation for phacomatoses being uh, dominant? Um, the way I think of it is it's because many of them are mutations in tumor suppressor genes. So basically, um, if you have one bad copy of the tumor suppressor gene, you know, the other copy is still suppressing tumors everywhere in your body until something happens to that one copy, then you start sprouting a, a tumor. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense to you guys or questions, thoughts. 
on that. Um, so the lesions that people get are tumors. They tend to be hamartomas. Um, they call them, you know, neurocutaneous syndromes because many of them affect the brain um, and skin. Not all of them have major skin findings. Um, and then why are they called phacomatoses? So phaco, as you know, means lens. Um, and the connection uh, is not to like the lens of the eye and phaco emulsification, but it's to the various, you know, birthmarks. They kind of looked like lentils or lenses um, to the Greeks. So, and they tend to present in childhood or young adulthood. You know, if you think of it, when you're born, you know, you haven't accumulated that many like random mutations in your body. So you're not likely to like have a tumor because your cells haven't grown that much, but it's more like as you go on in life and your cells die and replace themselves that you will accumulate mutations. Some of those might knock out the uh, good copy, the only good copy you have of the tumor suppressor gene. Um, so a couple of definitions, uh, hamartoma, uh, the malformation, that's an excess of elements normally present at the site. Chorostoma, it's a tumorous growth that has things that are not normally present there. Um, most of the neurofibromatoses, or sorry, the phagomatoses have uh, hamartomas, uh, not chorostomas. And then some of the uh, phagomatoses, they're not really from tumorous growth. They're really some sort of malformation. Um, so something didn't grow right. Um, something wasn't developed correctly. So, you know, there's the mutations in uh, tumor suppressor genes, which lead to the tumors or hamartomas. And then there's mutations in genes that affect development. And that might lead to more like malformations, especially vascular malformations. Um, so what's the angioma? There's a lot of words and then there's like variations on the words and they're all like used. It's really drives me crazy. Uh, the way I kind of approach it is I just pick one that I like the best and then I try to like just use that one. But then, you know, once I feel like I have a better grasp on the whole overall situation, then I link those other words back to that same word. So otherwise I find like I just get overwhelmed and can't like, you know, memorize things. So uh, a capillary hemangioma is uh, a proliferation of capillaries. There's not very much like cells in between, um, and it's a hamartoma, so that's like a lid capillary uh, hemangioma. Versus a hemangioblastoma, the word blast sounds bad, right? Like those are, um, so that's uh, when you have like more stromal cells, and these stromal cells have a lot of like vacuoles in them, um, and that tends, so you see it's not a lot of blood vessels, like in the tumor, it's the tumor is actually mostly the stromal cells and then it's got some blood vessels. And that can be more aggressive. That's why the word blast is in there. So what condition gets uh, retinal hemangioblastomas? VHL. So those tumors tend to be kind of more aggressive than a lot of the other hamartomas that you get um, in uh, the phacomatoses. And then, unfortunately, like they came out with this word like racemos hemangioma, but it's not actually a hemangioma, it's actually an arteriovenous malformation. So I would try to like think of it as arteriovenous malformation, then later connect in the word racemos you know, hemangioma there. So unfortunately, people came up with a lot of names and some of them make more sense than others. Um, so I think of, uh, the, so most of them, you know, being autosomal dominant, um, a couple of them uh, are sporadic. So that always like confused me, but they yet they have a gene associated with them. Do you guys know why that's the case? Like how can you be sporadic, but also be caused by mutations in a gene? Ashley? I think usually it's when there's, there's a sporadic or a new mutation in like a germline or a like during development, and so it still kind of has systemic effects. But. So you can have like a de novo mutation that's everywhere in your body, and that's one way that I still would call that autosomal dominant, but you can also get a de novo mutation when you're like kind of like a blastocyst, um, and then that mutation will just be present in certain parts of your body. So for example, like in Sturge-Weber, maybe the mutation is just present like here, 
like on one side, you know, because you're, you're, I don't know, was it a, your morula is like symmetric, or you, you know, is that, this cell's not gonna, mutation of this cell's not gonna like affect the other side. So that's why, um, you know, they uh, found that when they tested like the tissue of people that have like Sturge Weber, they have this GNAQ mutation, but the rest of their body doesn't have the GNAQ mutation. And so the Klippel, I don't know how to pronounce that, is also like that. Weibert Mason, I don't think anyone's found if there's a genetic thing, but it's also sporadic. So, um, yeah, that's an overview of the genetics. What was over here? Oh, um, so I just wanted to say that in general, you can have a characteristic tumor that's a characteristic of this syndrome without having the syndrome. So for example, you could have like a retinal capillary hemangioblastoma, single isolated one, without having the AHL. You could have like a retinal arterial venous malformation without having um, Wyvern Mason. So um, that's just something to you know keep in mind that although like maybe we most commonly see retinal capillary hemangioblastomas in the context of someone who has VHL and multiple tumors in both eyes and tumors elsewhere in their body, um, that it can be by itself. Okay, questions, thoughts? The ones with W's in them are sporadic. It's oh, like, oh, thank you. Sporadic. Sporadic. <laughs> okay. So uh, next we'll go on to the quiz. So there's a, should be a, in the box, a phagomatosis quiz blank. So you can like download that to your device and start pulling it out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna like uh, have a partner check your answers. I'll So maybe BK and Lydia could be partners. Abigail and George could be partners. Uh, Nana and Tony could be partners. Sean and Mubarak and uh, Cole and, Ab and Ashley. Just to kind of split up the seniority. Okay, you're silently working on this. This is not an open book test. <laughs> then, you'll, then you'll grade each other. Can you send me your uh, your uh, feedback on? Yes. Thank you. Reading list? No. Oh, okay. It's the optics book we talked Because I feel like that could be a good place to put the like an FA like imaging basics. He told me he has like five copies because not everyone gives it back. <laughs>
you're done, you can meet up with your partner. Oh, I know for an F1, but it's like on <laughs> Does it actually? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, then that's, that's what I thought <laughs> I of. Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. maybe that's not the syrup. Oh. No, I mean, it was pretty sad. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But it means, yeah, it's pretty I'll just like comment that I've definitely been gotten by this on OCAPs where they like used the eponym or the like really complex name no, for right. Sturge Weber. Like, right. And I'll 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 that's 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 that one. Recognize it. Nice. So like, even though it's real life, like, who cares? I don't know who does this. You still have to <laughs> memorize all the names. <laughs> but yeah, which one is autosomal recessive? Uh, X like recessive. And then IP is. Actually, it's dominant, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you just remember those circular principles. Okay. Yeah. 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 They have yeah. the yeah. diffuse coital. Um, um, uh, uh, otherwise, we just switch. Yeah. I forgot and then, the. I forgot the. Like, I guess IP like doesn't, but it like it mimics R O E. Yeah, what's the difference? So this one is just like chemical so <laughs> versus like yeah. like sturge yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. That was really good. You know, you know those memes where it's like, like an animal, right? right? And like they're <laughs> near at this thing in restaurants. Of course. It's just like, I think what they're trying to show is like enhancement. So it's like, it's a foul, a geminal, whatever. So it's a whatever. And then this guy, that's like a syrup. Which one? I put syrup. For this one? Oh, I don't know. Those are the only like ones I've studied. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, these things. I thought it was little triangles. I don't know. I wonder. Oh, okay. What I just combined. What I thought about it was. This was like a Sarah Beller, Emmanuel Blustomer. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought it was. No, that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Because there is like, high risk coming from much higher size. It's like a secondary to a secondary. You can also have I think that's what we're trying to get at. I definitely had a U World question at some point that only showed this and asked what it was, and it was. Um, like these are the stolen since they're right next yeah. to that. Five stars, not BCSC. It was, um, um, in the PowerPoint, like later on. No, not yet. Somewhere in January. That's the day because we were at a flood and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. This, this, was, on, this was straight out of the house. Straight out of the house. This is what this is about. This is what this is about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way really like, if we study them well, we can have a Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I would suggest it. I feel like NF1 is the one that can do a bunch of random stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys about done going over your quizzes? Any questions that came up? Or? I did have a question. Uh, yeah. That feature for tuberous sclerosis. Yeah, tuberous sclerosis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that supposed to be? Those are supposed to be portable tubers. No, those are supposed to be su uh, sub epidymal nodules. Uh, 
hematomas or nodules. The cortical tubers, I think, are just like kind of like triangular white things in the cortex. They don't really like. I don't think they stick out. Maybe they. Maybe when they get really big, look like a potato. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I think they only call them potato because they're triangular. Oh really? Yeah, the tuber is. Because potatoes are triangular. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. In the description, it was like, yeah, the tuber is for. Oh, maybe it's a root. For which you... Oh, that makes so much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're really <laughs> bad, Karen. Thank you. Tuber. Okay. Uh, so now we're gonna do like. Um, I don't know, do you guys want to do three groups or two groups for our two groups? Okay, for, we can do split it this way, and then Nana, you can go on that side. Yes. Wow. Can't wait to get rid of this guy. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to give a case-based learning a try. So you can, um, each of you should have a scribe. Each group should have a scribe. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if that's a cerebellum, bro. <laughs> and there's this uh, Shikomatosis CTBL 2023 blank. So we can start going through this case together and come up with the answers together, and then we'll kind of like have periodic. Which we like to discuss things. <laughs> yeah, as you just come up with answers as a group. Like, so the first, you know, so you review this case, um, and then, then you uh, come up with a differential. And then, as a group, write it down, and then come up with you know what are the blood vessel abnormalities names that go along with those items on the differential. Just pick a couple top items. Don't list every single phagomatosis. So. Is this stumping you? Is that was that a crappy photo? <laughs> That could just be a non severe. Uh, so act like this vessel is a little dilated and tortuous compared to normal. And that one's really dilated and tortuous. I don't think you get like do you get retinal capillary telangiectasia? Or white brain tissue? Maybe you don't, right? Yeah, it's just contract. Yeah. White brain tissue. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
do they all have that? They do, it's really mostly, and maybe just a little bit outside. Like, yeah. I didn't realize because my first name sounded like a little bit too shaky. Birth history. It was like really small, just kind of angel, like it wasn't done like big to anything as much. Do I see? I see a flash of purpose. I have you from the the brand and it's like what color do you see behind what's your favorite color? I'm like, wait, no, we're I always guess their birthday, I look at their chart, I'm like, oh, it's your birthday and Jacob's like June is it? Oh yes, they're like, oh, 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 oh no oh, my god. <laughs> and then like the brother's like, I want you to look in my eye. I'm like, I don't know, you gotta be really good. <laughs> now listen to like, what your mom says. I always ask what their favorite color is good, but it's always green, green that sure. comes out really. And I'm like, well red, hey, you know you're gonna see green. And they see green and like, oh my god. Uh, it's, it's all the way. Is it blue? Is it Talk to you. Oh, are you moving through the there's more questions? Oh there are. Oh, yeah, go to the next slide. Wait, where is it? Uh, so I can, oh, I can bring it up. If yeah, you, you need to bring it up and drive yourself. Sorry. Oh, 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 this is a self-driving exercise. Yes. Okay, that's what I have to ask the chair. Driving yourself. Oh, really want to It's for us. It's for us. Yeah, we only came up with like four, uh, maybe just one. Uh, okay. Yeah, we only came up with five. Yeah. Like IP yeah. or. But I see. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Wait, okay. okay. um. Uh, I don't know if it's a song. I don't know if it's a song. So, uh. Yeah, so I, I think I put cavernous in my language. Oh, but wait, I, he doesn't just have vascular IP? IP does. No, it oh, does. Okay. It has like the peripheral. <laughs> yeah, so I guess on, I, I put IP on top. Okay. Uh, so you put it. Oh, Red Hill Tavern, I just get it. Oh, that is so fake. Uh, it's like yes. an other yeah. brain. Uh, uh, and I put also phagomatosis uh, treatment for vascular IPs. Yeah? <laughs> 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 Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Do you guys need to work together on this? Okay. Right. Any questions asked to parents? So, questions that we have is the family history of the body, any kidney issues, any dental procedures, any medical procedures, do they see a neurologist? Family history. I was like, you're expecting this to be. Periphery, 
consider brain imagery. You can have a Okay. Yourself. Awesome. That sounds pretty good. Might as well throw a VMA on there. Throw what? <laughs> lab, lab test for VMA. For VMA. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, uh, so the um, the one thing that might not have come up when you guys were discussing the differential is a congenital retinal macro vessel. <laughs> but you described it right in the You described it right in the <laughs> Okay, I did. I did overhear something, and I was like, "Okay, that's good." And actually, when you have a congenital retinal macro vessel, you can, um, you know, get a brain thing too. So, what's a congenital macro macro vessel? Uh, there'll be a picture if we ever get to the end of this, which we probably won't. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, and let's just discuss. I'll just tell you that, like. If, you know, it's really awkward sometimes, like, telling the parents, like, talking to them about the EUA when you have, like, not that good of a clue what's going on. Um, if I have a really good clue, like, I, well, I try to get as best of a clue as I can before I schedule the EUA. First, so I can be prepared. And second, so, like, I can talk to the parents about, you know, to give them some idea. Because if it is, like, VHL, the tumor is pretty small, we should just cry over laser it while we're there. We shouldn't, like you know, schedule a second visit, and if you just suddenly come out and tell the parents that they've got, like, a tumor in their eye, they're going to be, and then you're trying to, like, consent them in five minutes so you can run back to the OR and, like, laser them, that's, like, not good. So I, I think if I saw something like that, I would tell them, you know, that maybe VHL is on the differential and that we have tumors, but they're, you know, not, like, cancers, they don't spread elsewhere in the body and kill people. Well, they do kill people, but anyway... Um, <laughs> and uh, just tell them, you know, we're going to take a really good look and that's going to help give us what's, yeah, something generic like that. So um, this is VHL. There's some subretinal fluid leaking from that tumor that's affecting the vision. Um, and the, did I delete, did I leave the answers on the next question or did I? Oh, okay. Um, so maybe we could just discuss this one as a group, like, uh, uh, no, you can discuss them in small groups. Okay, break back into your small groups and start going over that. Is that an OCT of Silverado Did you have an exit right now? No, it's not. No. It's just like, yeah, just a little separate level of the macula. That's what I'm saying. So, what kind of treatments do you recommend? Like, probably just eat or bust or something. Yep, those are some good options. What are the risks of treatments? Well, if you. Yeah, you stop bleeding. Yeah, I mean, especially with laser. Can you stop bleeding from the fire? Oh, oh, oh. So you freeze the estimate bulk and start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one is just bigger and bigger, so if I could get a little bit higher, I'd do it. It's kind of posterior, so sometimes you can't reach far enough in the stairs to do like the, you know, for it to let you get the farther down. Do you think his vision's going to be bad? Yeah. Yeah. And then the parents are always asking, like, is he going to go blind? Is he going to go blind? Yeah. What would happen if we didn't treat this tomorrow? Yeah, so um, the, these tumors can be really, really bad. Like, if you let them go too far. Just cause like a total inoperable retinal detachment, and then that point it's just like a toast. I've seen that happen. So, yeah, and they probably. It's exudative, and then it just scars together. Uh, and then, the, as long as it's not like exuding or growing, for 
testing okay okay so I think genetic testing is good like um, it's really sensitive so you know you could consider whether you want to get all the other tests or if you want to get the genetic testing first and then if that's positive then do all the other tests so because it's a single isolated capillary hemangioblastoma it could have just been a random occurrence and not associated with VHL so uh, then you can go on to the next question, discuss in your groups. like a variant of uncertain significance, a benign oh, variant, okay. um, uh, likely pathogenic and yeah. pathogenic. Pathogenic means like probably there's better evidence that it causes the disease. Benign means like lots of people who don't have the disease have it. It's <laughs> everywhere in between. Okay, let's have our, let's have our <laughs> discussion. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so what, um, I think uh, let's um, any questions you guys on like the treatment and like effects and stuff, or you guys feel like you have a reasonable understanding of that? Okay. It should. Uh, I saw some, while I was preparing for the lecture, I did see some people injected anti VEGF um, as well. I, like, I don't think it was like, you know, if you crowd a lesion and like it stops growing and stops exuding, that, then the subrenal fluid will be gone forever. But yeah. So, um, yeah, what tests? I guess I have the answers somewhere here. Oh, too many things.
Um, so I thought, you know, if someone had like a VHL, so, okay. So you would expect it to be a pathogenic variant. So variants, on, when you get a clinical genetic test back, if someone has a variant, it means like, you know, 99% of people have this and I don't have this, this, you know, variant in the gene. And they don't call them mutations anymore. They call them variants. Um, then, uh, you know, they're either classified as benign um, variant of uncertain significance, likely pathogenic or pathogenic based on the existing evidence in the literature. Like, for example, if someone did a pedigree, you know, and another family has this exact variant, then and everyone who has it has VHL and everyone who doesn't, doesn't have it. It's probably going to be a pathogenic one. But if this, this is a variant that's present in like in one in 1,000 of the general population and that is considered healthy, then it's going to be probably a benign variant. Uh, so, you know, the genetic testing of the tumor, they would likely be compound heterozygous or homozygous or pathogenic variants. And uh, if someone had, uh, were homozygous and they had, basically, they'd have no tumor suppressor in their whole body and they'd have to be one big cancer, so that's why people aren't, like, born with that. Okay. What's, com what's compound? Yeah. yeah. What's compound heterozygous? Well, what compound that heterozygous. Sorry, compound uh, heterozygous means like you have like one variant that's bad and another variant that's bad, but they're different. It's like it's on the same gene. Different like locations on the same gene. Yeah, like okay. different locations, or one could be a deletion, the other one could be like a missense mutation. You know. So two recessive alleles from the same gene, but those two alleles. Okay, so you can move on to the alternate reality slide. Yeah. 
is a macro, is it, it is a congenital retinal macro vessel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they can have like a brain, um, I think brain vascular abnormalities too. So, yeah. Is there like bad prognosis with it or? I don't think so, but I'd have to Google it. Still last year, I, I won't this year. I'm lucky number 13. Yes, 13 is in RB. I think I put, uh, I put 11. malformations that was really good Retinoblastoma is what, is, is what I wanted you guys to think of. Maybe that was a leading question. Um, uh, I came up with choroidal hemangiomas, retinal cavernous hemangiomas, and vasoproliferative tumors. Do you, did you guys come up with anything else? Uh, and the vasoproliferative tumors, apparently the most common causes are retina is pigmentosa and coats. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, so I think you know it's eight fifty. Uh, I have a lot more stuff, but I don't think we should necessarily go through it all right now. <clears throat> well, we don't have that many more slides. Uh, we can keep going. Or we can just call it quits. <laughs> you can work on your own <laughs> and let me know if you have questions. Let's call it quits.
So if you guys could, um, you know, I guess let me know, like, tell me more about this this format thing that with the case space and how that's going. What are your thoughts on that? I'm looking for your feedback now on the case based format and like talking and discussing. Yeah. I yeah, do, I do like the little pre-lecture. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. Like, exactly, you like read our minds. Yeah. Uh, no, well, I think Ashley, maybe talk to Srob and then Srob talk to me. About the pre-lecture. Thanks, Ashley. Exactly. Yeah, any other feedback on how this thing is today? Answer, but it is an answer. So I think it does not affect the eyes. I searched the literature as thoroughly as possible to figure that out. But if I'm wrong, let me know. Is that different than Wagner? Wagner. Yeah. So Wagner does affect the eyes with high myopia, retinal detachment, and it's a, a mutation in Versican. It's like a skeletal dysplasia. I think, yeah, it's a metochondrial dysplasia, but I don't think it affects the eyes. But just wanted to clarify that. Thank <laughs> you. 